हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर सीमा श्रीवास्तवा सीनियर लेक्चरर डाइट मोतीबाग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी ह्यूमन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन पार्ट वन फ्रॉम क्लास इलेवन इकोनॉमिक्स आफ्टर स्टडिंग दिस चैप्टर द लर्नर्स विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल सोर्सेज ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन फिजिकल कैपिटल एंड ह्यूमन कैपिटल ह्यूमन कैपिटल एंड ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट ह्यूमन कैपिटल एंड इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ ह्यूमन कैपिटल फॉर्मेशन इन एवरी इकॉनमी विदाउट एक्सेप्शन द फोर मोस्ट गोल ऑफ प्लानर्स इज टू अचीव डिसेंट रेट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ देर आर इकॉनमीज विच हैव अचीव अ हाई रेट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड देर आर अदर्स विच हैव रिमेन्ड अ लेगार्ड द ऑब्वियस क्वेश्चन इज वॉट कॉजेज दिस डिफरेंस इन द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ दीज इकॉनमीज there have been various explanations to this question in economics literature one important explanation is in terms of human capital education is sought not only as it confers higher earning capacity on people but also for the highly valued benefits that it generates it gives a person better social standing and pride and enables one to make better choices in life it also equips human beings with the knowledge to understand the changes taking place in a society it also stimulates innovations efficiency level working capacity and skills of an educated and well trained person are usually regarded as superior to that of an untrained or uneducated person thus it is clear that education and training enhance people's working potential both quantitatively and qualitatively therefore education and training boost productive efficiency and increase individuals income and subsequently her contribution to national income of the economy thus expanding education opportunities in a nation accelerates development process let's see the concept of human capital just as a country can turn physical resources like land into physical capital like factories farms plants etc similarly the country can also turn human resources like students into human capital like engineers teachers and doctors societies need sufficient human capital in the form of well trained and qualified people sources of human capital formation human capital formation deals with capabilities which are developed through formal and informal education at school and at home and through measures taken to training improvement of health and nutrition levels and mobility in the labor market there are a number of ways in which human capital can be developed investment in education is considered to be an important source of human capital there are other sources such as investment on health on the job training rural development expenditure on migration information and communication etc the different sources of human capital formation are discussed below expenditure on education expenditure on education one of the most important indicators is the most important way of enhancing and enlarging any productive workforce in the country investment in education promotes economic growth it helps in creating a productive labor force by adding to their knowledge and skills it helps in getting employment and income earning opportunities to teachers workers manufacturers etc education helps in providing basic skills and encourages modern attitudes in the people it helps in achieving growth with equal opportunities for all economists have focused on the need for expanding educational equal opportunities in a nation as it accelerates the development process along with justice spending on education by individual is similar to spending on capital goods by companies individuals invest in education to increase their future earned income and raise the living standards of masses it widens the opportunities in order to make a better choice in life it helps in stimulating innovations by adopting new technologies expenditure on health health expenditure is a source of human capital formation 
as it directly increases the supply of healthy labor force and leads to qualitative improvement in human capital. Poor health and un undernourishment adversely affect the quality of manpower. A sound mind resides in a sound body is an old saying. Expenditure on health makes a person more efficient and productive. A large number of poor people living below subsistence levels in the underdeveloped countries suffer from malnutrition. A sick labor without access to medical facilities is compelled to abstain from work and there is loss of productivity. Therefore, expenditure on health is important to build and maintain productive labor force and to improve quality of life of people in the society. Adequate food and proper nourishment of people along with adequate health and sanitation facilities lead to qualitative improvement in human capital. More and better organized health facilities and human power including hospitals and medical aid facilities are needed. It is required that free medical aid to the poor and downtrodden are provided. Now how we can do that? Preventive medication that is vaccination, healing meditation that is medical intervention during illness, social medicine that is spread of health facilities, literacy and awareness, provision of clean drinking water, good sanitation facilities. The general health standard in India is very low. This is reflected in the high incidence of morbidity in the country. This is related to poverty of people who do not get even a square meal a day. Hospitals are located at a far place and medical care is unattainable to them. On the job training, as stated earlier, productivity of physical capital is substantially enhanced with the improvement in human capital. Due to this reason, many firms provide on the job training to their workers. Such training has the advantage that it can be provided fast and without much cost. It increases the skill and efficiency of the workers and leads to an increase in the production and productivity. On the job training may take different forms. Workers may be trained in the firm itself under supervision of a skilled worker and or the worker may be sent for off campus training. Such trainings has an advantage that it can be provided fast and without much cost. On the job training can be tailored to the learning capabilities and needs of the individuals working on particular machines. Such training increase the skill and efficiency of the workers and lead to an increase in production and productivity. After on the job trainings of the employees, a firm may insist that the workers should work for a specific period of time so that it can cover the benefits of the enhanced productivity owing to the training. It is a source of human capital formation as return of expenditure on such training in the form of enhanced labor productivity is more than the cost of it. Expenditure on rural development. Education can contribute significantly to rural development in a variety of ways. It can widen their horizon and help to overcome their superstitions. Adoption of new agricultural techniques and new methods are rendered easier. If farmers are educated in a labor surplus economy like India, education can help rural people in acquiring skills to set up cottage industries on their own and get employed fruitfully, which can also help in solving the problems of seasonal unemployment. Expenditure on migration. People migrate from one place to another in search of jobs that fetch them higher salaries. Unemployment, unemployed people from rural areas migrate to urban areas in search of jobs. Technically qualified persons like engineers, doctors, etc., they migrate to other countries because of higher salaries that they may get in such countries. Migration in both these cases involve cost of transportation from one place to another and higher cost of living in the migrated places. Expenditure on migration is a source of human capital formation as increase in earnings in the migrated place is more than the increase in cost due to migration. The enhanced earnings in the new place 
outweigh the cost of migration. Hence, expenditure on migration is also a source of human capital formation. Expenditure on information and communication. Expenditure is incurred to acquire information and communication relating to labor, market and other markets. It involves amount spent on enhancing the information and communication technology and making the technology resources available in remote areas at an affordable cost. For example, people want to know the salary levels and other entitlements associated with various types of jobs. Similarly, they may want to know whether the educational institutes provide the right type of employable skills and at what cost. Information is necessary to make rational decisions regarding investments in human capital as well as for efficient utilization of acquired human capital stock. Physical capital and human capital. Let us see the difference between the two. Physical capital means that part of production which is used for further production. Physical capital has a lifespan which means that after certain years its value would depreciate and with the passage of time its requirement depends upon the desired rate of economic growth. It is a tangible input. Physical capital is completely mobile between countries expect, except for some. Artificial trade restrictions. The entrepreneur possesses knowledge to calculate the expected rates of return over a range of investments in physical capital and rationally decides which investment decision should be made. On the other hand, human capital refers to the stock of skill, ability, expertise, education and knowledge embodied in the person. Human capital is needed to make effective use of physical capital. There is a need for investment in human capital to produce more human capital societies. Have sufficient human capital in the form of competent people who have themselves been educated and trained as professors and other professionals. In other words, we need good human capital to produce other human capital in future, say architects, doctors, engineers, etc. Nature of benefits from both capitals are different. Human capital benefits not only the owner, but also the society in general. It creates both private and social benefits. This is called external benefit. For example, an educated person can effectively contribute to socio-economic development of the country. On the other hand, physical capital creates only private benefit. For example, the benefit from a capital goods flow to those who pay the price for the product and services produced by it. Let us see the other term human capital and human development. Human capital is dependent on education and health as a means to increase produ labor productivity. Human development is based on the idea that education and health are integral to human well-being because only when people have the ability to read and write and the ability to lead a long and healthy life, they will be able to make other choices which they value. Human capital treats human beings as a means to an end, the end being the increase in productivity. In this view, any investment in education and health is unproductive if it does not enhance output of goods and services. On the other hand, in human development perspective, human beings are wants in themselves. Human welfare should be increased through investments in education and health sectors, even if such investments do not result in higher labor productivity. They need to be educated and healthy to live a meaningful life and make rational choices. Therefore, basic education and basic health are important in themselves for the well-being of people. Irrespective of their contribution to labor productivity, human capital and economic growth, we know that the labor skills of an educated person is more than that of an uneducated person. And the former, for example, the skilled laborer generates more income than the later, the unskilled one. Economic growth means the sustained increase in real national income of a country. 
knowing that a healthy person can provide uninterrupted labor supply for a longer period of time. Health is also an important factor of economic growth. Thus, both education and health, along with many other factors like on-the-job training, job market information, and migration increase and individuals' income generating capacity. Many of the countries remained underdeveloped as the masses in the countries are either illiterate or their level of education is low. So, most of them are unskilled or untrained and their general health is poor. The enhanced productivity of human beings or the human capital contributes substantially not only towards increasing labor productivity, but also stimulates innovations and creates ability to absorb new technologies. Education provides knowledge to understand changes in the society and scientific advancements and thus facilities, inventions and innovations. Similarly, the availability of labor force facilitates adaptation to new technologies. There are reasons to believe that the casualty between human capital and economic growth flows in either directions. That is, higher income leads to the high level of human capital and vice versa. Thus, high level of human capital causes growth of income and higher income levels leads to higher investments in the human capital formation. India recognized the importance of human capital in economic growth long ago. The seventh five-year plan says, human resources development has necessarily to be assigned a key role in any development strategy, particularly in a country with a large population. Trained and educated on sound lines, a large population can itself become an asset in accelerating economic growth and in ensuring social changes in desired directions. Thus, human capital plays an important role in economic development. In fact, effective use of physical capital itself is dependent upon human resources. Large scale investment in human resources are needed if physical capital is to be exploited in an efficient way. Let us see the importance and the role of human capital formation. It will be clear from the following points. First, effective use of physical capital. The growth and productivity of physical capital depends mainly on the human capital formation. Effective use of physical capital depends upon human resources. The physical capital can be created only by means of hard and intelligent work of human beings in the economy since it requires technical, professional and administrative people. Hence, human skill and the, their efforts help in effective utilization of physical capital. Second, increased productivity and GDP. Human capital formation raises the productivity and production as a knowledgeable and skilled worker makes better use of resources. Increase in productivity and quality production depends on technical skill of the people which can be acquired only by means of education, training and maintaining the health of the people. Investment in human capital helps increase knowledge relating to management of resources, technology and production and it also helps in acquiring new skills. Third, inventions, innovations and technological improvements. The human capital formation stimulates innovations and creates ability to absorb new technologies. Education provides knowledge to understand changes in the society and scientific advancements, which facilitates inventions and innovations. Similarly, the availability of educated and well-trained labor force facilitates adaptation of new technologies. Fourth, modernization of attitudes. The knowledgeable, skilled and physically fit people are powerful instrument of changes in the society. Economic development of a country depends on the minds of the people and their changing attitudes towards creating a desire for development. Investment in human capital helps in changing mental outlook and promotes development of the economy. Fifth, increasing life expectancy. Formation of human capital raises life expectancy of the people, health, facilities and availability of nutritive food enables people to lead 
healthy and long life. This in turn adds to the quality of life. Sixth, it improves the quality of life. The quality of life depends upon the level of education, health of a person and skill formation acquired by the people. Human capital formation not only makes people productive and creative but also transforms the lives of the people. People start living and enjoying higher incomes and a more satisfying life. Seventh, control of population growth. Education helps in modernizing the way of thinking of people. It enlightens them to the need to improve their standards of living by restricting the size of their families. As more and more women get education and seek employment, they prefer small families. It has been observed that educated people have smaller families as compared to illiterate families. So, spread of education is necessary to control the population growth rate. Students, let's summarize the whole chapter. Human capital refers to the skills, knowledge and expertise which an individual acquires. Physical capital means that component of production which is used for further production utilized properly by human capital. Human capital uses physical capital for further production. Human capital formation refers to the addition made to the available human capital over a period of time. The economic and social benefits of human capital formation and human development are well established.